Hello and welcome to our midweek meditations. I'm Victor Kim. I'm the lead minister at Richmond Presbyterian Church. And uh, we're in the midst of our series of conversations with members of our congregation. And we're beginning with these conversations with members of our session. So they're elders. And our session in the Presbyterian Church is the body that sort of governs um, the, the life and work of our congregation. Elders are our servant leaders. Um, they are called not to rule really as much as they are called to serve. But of course they do uh, have a ruling capacity as well as a pastoral capacity. And um, it's really great that as many of us can come to know our elders, as many of our elders as possible, because these relationships are so important for us within the church. So today I'm delighted to welcome to our midweek meditation and conversation uh, our elder, Mary Hansen. So Mary, welcome. Thank you, Victor. Nice to be here. And Mary, we want to wish you a happy birthday because we know that a couple of days ago, you celebrated your birthday. Yeah, we we're good say... out on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say what the age is, but I hope you had a good day. I did. I did. I saw some family and it was, it was very nice even to see some of them these days. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, um, we can probably guess, if people haven't already, that based on your accent, that you, have, you were probably not born here in Richmond. So, could you tell us a little bit about your history? Where were you born and how did you get here? Well, I was not born here, that's for sure. <laughs> I was born in a, actually a beautiful part um, uh, of the world. It's a lovely, uh, historic uh, fishing village and it's called Tarbert, T-A-R-B-E-R-T, -E on the west coast of Scotland in the county of Argyll on beautiful sea loch called Loch Fine, uh, which has a wonderful um, sheltered harbour and marina. It was, when I was growing up, it was a herring fishing village, well known for that, and um, we used to have smoked herring, which were kippers, and they were, they were, sent out all over the world, the world famous, Loch Fine Kippers. And um, would maybe be only about a 1,500 people population. So it was a very um, secure, sheltered, uh, safe place to be as a child. Everyone knew everybody else and there was a real uh, feeling of, of community. And so I lived there uh, at home until I was about 15 where we had uh, school just went to junior high school so after school was completed we had to go to a different town live away from home at 15 and complete uh, senior high school that's not the case nowadays but it was when I was when I was a girl and uh, so then um, I went on after that after I finished school to study um, at Edinburgh University and also at uh, Murray House training uh, teacher training college in, in Edinburgh also so um, I got my arts degree and I became a teacher and I taught um, school. Um, I was teaching in Ayrshire and in Glasgow before emigrating to Canada at the end of 1968. So I came to Vancouver because uh, I wanted to spread my wings anyway. And uh, my twin sister had emigrated um, to Vancouver. She went to Toronto first and then by the time I decided to come to Canada she was in Vancouver. So I emigrated there at the end of 68 and then um, uh, started to teach school there. Yeah, so that's, that's how I came to be in BC. Great. And um, when you got here, what sort of uh, work beyond teaching uh, did you end up doing? Well, it was just mainly mainly teaching. You know, I was uh, I got a job straight away. It wasn't <laughs> like today we could come over here and uh, Canada was wide open with opportunities. Tons of people came from from Britain in those days, uh, late sixties, seventies. Britain was in a bad state in those days economically, and people were were looking further afield. So I lived in the West End with my sister and a friend, and. Um, you know, te teaching elementary school okay. um, in, in Vancouver. Um, so it was, it was really, 
that was that was what I did when I lived in Vancouver uh, uh, to begin with. Mm -hmm. That's not what I ended up doing, but I, I started off doing that. Um, and in, in, as far as my family goes, my dad was uh, a Tarbert uh, village native, mm -hmm. and my mom was born and raised on the island of Lewis, which um, is in the Outer Hebrides, in uh, way far in the northwest of Scotland. Mm -hmm. And um, her first language was, was Scottish uh, Gaelic, or Gaelic, as, as some people say. And... Uh, Used to learn a lot of her, a lot of the Gaelic, Gaelic songs oh. as a child growing up from her. Um, my father uh, was a district clerk with the county council of Argyll, and um, but he was also a wonderfully strong Christian. Oh. Um, his faith was just such an example to us all, and he was a loving, caring. Um, wonderful individual and always always ready to help others and um, he uh, also was clerk of session in the church I grew up in and um, he directed choir and my grandfather who was also a Tarbert native um, he was a fisherman there in, in that village and I never knew him he was I wish I had but he was gone before before I was born but um, my, this was my father's father, and he had modeled that same uh, Christian witness to his family, just a uh, highly respected man. And I'm forever grateful for that, that I had this uh, history, if you like, of uh, a faith being passed on from one generation to the next. That's a great story, and I, I certainly know that that uh, faith transmission has continued through you, uh, to your children as well, uh, having met some of them. So um, I know that that tradition continues. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us about uh, when you met John and, and how oh, that all yeah. came about? <laughs> yeah, well, um, I met John. Well, I, I'll tell you about my family a little bit. I had three siblings. Um, one's my twin sister, Elizabeth, whom I lived with in the West End. Uh, when I first came to Canada in 1968. And um, she lives in Vancouver. My brother passed away in Scotland 11 years ago. And uh, my older sister still lives in Scotland in the town of Paisley. And I met my husband, John, um, also a Scot, as you know, from Glasgow. And I met him in Vancouver at the Johann Strauss Club, which was a club that... Um, quite Not a Scottish a club, is it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> but uh, we eventually, we graduated to the Scottish club later and later on when we did the Scottish country dancing. But um, yeah, it was uh, a lot of Brits and, and Europeans congregated there in those, in those days, right, right downtown Vancouver. And it, was, it had a big restaurant and had all kinds of dance music. And I loved dancing. And so did John. And it had all sorts of different kinds. It had oompa pa and modern and rock and everything. And uh, so uh, this was in 1970. And uh, he asked me to dance. And the rest history. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've noticed my, the West End mug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in honor of your time at the West End. Yeah, the How West End you... days were fun. It was yeah. Fun, it was, uh, fun times. I'm much tired. different, much different uh, city totally back then than it is different. now, no doubt. Totally, totally different. Oh, yeah. Same, with, totally same with Richmond, of course. So how did you end up in Richmond? Well, a bit of a story here. Um, we, uh, uh, what do I think? Well, that's a long, it's a long story, really. Um, what happened was that I, um, we lived in, the West End, John and I, we got married in Central Presbyterian Church um, and we lived in the West End and um, then uh, I, I taught school there and uh, I, was, I was teaching in uh, one of the elementary schools in um, Vancouver, South Vancouver, Sir James Douglas. And um, so I was teaching there and uh, we decided, I, I stopped teaching because I was pregnant with my first child, so we decided to go back to Scotland 
So we did the return trip and uh, we went back to Scotland in 1972, just before uh, Fiona was born and um, lived there for uh, six years. Yeah, six years. And we, our, first, our first two girls were born in Scotland and we stayed there six years and we came back to Canada in 1978, but it was to Winnipeg. And uh, we were there for 14 months. And then we came to Richmond and John, John didn't want to stay in, Rich, in uh, Winnipeg, neither did I. Uh, so we came back, we came back. We, our intention was really to get back to BC. And uh, John got a job with what was then BC Tell, now Tell Us, and um, we bought a house in Richmond in 1979. Um, so that, that's how we came back to Richmond in 1979. So we've been here a long time. There's a lot of people that ended up in BC because they didn't want to stay in Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't well, I had, anyway. we had one winter there, and that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then when you were in Richmond, did you just end up at Richmond Presbyterian Church because it was the Presbyterian Church in town? Uh, pretty much. Um, you know, I, I was baptized and, and raised in the, in the Presbyterian Church. And um, while we were in Scotland, um, I, I did uh, attend the Church of Scotland while we, when we were there in that in the six years that we were there. Um, I, I became a, a member of the Church of Scotland at, um, I was about 31. I did quite a lot of questioning before I decided to become a member of the, the church, especially during the university years, you know, when you question lots of things. And uh, then when we returned to Canada, then uh, I was, I did, uh, become a member of the First Presbyterian Church in Winnipeg and then after that we, we came when we came back um, we're actually in the West End for for a few uh, weeks before we bought the house in Richmond and um, we were in Central Presbyterian Church there and the minister there knew we were going to come to Richmond because we bought a house there so he told Tony Plomp that there was this young family coming and Tony wasn't long before he, got, he was on our doorstep. <laughs> but I have to tell you a, a kind of funny uh, coincidence that happened when um, the first Sunday that we attended RPC and there was Bob Govro and Tom McKinnon at the door welcoming people and Bob was always showing people to, their, to a pew, you know. So he showed us into a pew and um, we sat down and this couple started to talk to us, hi, hello, welcome, are you, are you uh, visiting, you know, and I said, actually, no, we've just actually moved into to, to Richmond, and this is our first Sunday, oh, and where are you staying, where, where are you living, so I said at that time, it was 10420 number four road, and they looked at me, and they said, we're your neighbours, <laughs> this was George and Weimar, <laughs> And they gave us such a welcome and they, mm -hmm. and they have, were wonderful neighbours to us for over 30 years, 35 years yeah. or so. Yeah. And um, so, so were the people of the church. Tony was, was welcoming and uh, anxious to get us all involved in the church. And, and we just, it was kind of like a second family for us. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a very warm welcome. I know that you and John have three girls, right? Yeah, we have three girls. We, we have three daughters and four grandchildren. Um, our, our, our girls are um, Fiona and Ruth, who were born in Scotland, and Jennifer, who was born five years later in, in Vancouver. She's the only Canadian in the group. And uh, yeah, and then we have um, four grandchildren, um, Claire, 19, Robbie is almost 17, Ailey is uh, 11 and Parker is eight. So two boys and, and two girls. Mm -hmm. And they are all loving, caring human beings. And they bring me so much uh, comfort and joy. And it, it's, just, uh, it's, it's just such a blessing in my life. Yeah, no. but, but it's wonderful too to have my twin. My twin uh, is, as you know, in Vancouver. And we share just so much. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we just have a really close bond, as I think most twins do. We're not identical, but we do have a very close bond, and she's definitely my best friend. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful to be so close to your twin sister. Yeah. And of course, she was with you uh, 
for your birthday, I believe. She was. Yeah. She was. Yeah. Yes. And she um, very much enjoyed the service that was we sat and watched last Sunday. It was wonderful. Yeah. Thank right. you. The Thanksgiving service was beautiful. Um, when did you become an elder at Grace uh, at Richmond? Um, I was I was ordained as an elder 25 years ago, 1995, I think it was. Yeah, and um, you know I had been asked at least two or three times, and each time I, before, well, I eventually agreed, obviously, but I wasn't. I just didn't feel ready. I was. I'd been raising a young family, and then I had had a bit of a health crisis, and I. I just didn't feel ready, so um, gave it some time. But as as I went on with the Richmond um, Presbyterian family, um, it, my faith uh, really developed and um, it matured. And as I became actually, as I became more active in the church, more actively involved in in Bible study, worship, um, teaching Sunday school, leading the the junior choir, the choristers, as they were called, and in prayer and fellowship with other Christians, I did become more and more aware of God's call um, to serve. You know, I thought that, I just felt that being a member of the church, we are called to serve and, and use whatever gifts that God has given us. And so I did become more and more aware of that. So I prayed about it, about the eldership and, um, still struggled with a sense of inadequacy. I mean, I think we all do. I mean, we all think we should be so good at everything, but that's not really what it's about at all. It's about uh, uh, service and, and humility and uh, all of that. And so um, I felt then that if God was calling me, he would guide me and, and equip me for whatever tasks he had and what for me to do and whatever challenges uh, lay ahead. And I do find I think it's a privilege and a responsibility too um, to serve in the church um, it's um, the part of it I really enjoy is building relationships with people uh, as you get to do when you have a, an elders district and I really enjoy that I, I know that we all of us in the session have different gifts a variety of gifts one body and um, we are asked to um, use them in whichever way we can for God's glory uh, and to serve others and to serve him. And um, I, I just know that I think that God works through all of us on the session. We're, we're a, a very group and uh, there's a lot of respect for one another. And um, I know the Spirit, Spirit works, the Holy Spirit works through us to, to accomplish. Well, thank, thank you for sharing that. I know that um, one of your passions, of course, is music. Um, oh, yeah. As you said, that you, you, you were directing and conducting the junior choir yeah. uh, at Richmond. Um, mm -hmm. And you've sung in the choir, of course, and uh, you do some solo singing these yeah. days. And we've had you on our, our, our uh, broadcasts uh, mm -hmm. singing solos and helping to sing the hymns. So um, I know that, that you love singing and that whole musical component of it. Um, is that something that you really miss because of the pandemic restrictions? And, and what else, what are you looking forward to once the, uh, the restrictions kind of uh, are lifted and, and we can sort of do the things, some of the things that we used to do? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we'll ever get back to the exact same. And maybe that's a good thing, but um, yeah. maybe it's music, maybe it's something else. What are you looking forward to? Yeah, well, music's been a part of my life forever, choral singing especially. I mean, I've been doing that since I was a child. Uh, my father directed choir in my church. And in that, in those days, or in that denomination, uh, you know it was a strict branch of the Presbyterian Church in Scotland. And they had uh, no instruments. We only sang psalms. But my, and they had no choirs either. But my father started this choir. <laughs> and I loved that. That was the one thing I loved about church was the choir. And all the, the great music that we did, and it was all a cappella, so it was good ear training too, you know, because we didn't have, have an instrument, and I've always been singing. And I loved the opportunity to, to sing uh, in Richmond too, when I've been singing all the time, but I, like, I love to sing in Richmond. In the, in the senior choir too at one point, and leading the children, I just find it so uplifting, especially um, 
in church, I, I feel God's pleasure when I'm singing, you know, I just love it. I just feel the, the sense of the spirit and, and that as long as it's not about me, I don't want it to be about me. I want it to point to the Lord and for his glory. So I miss that terribly. I, in Richmond, I've been singing with the, the Richmond Chorus. There's, the, there's an organization in Richmond called the Richmond Orchestra and Chorus Association. And I've been singing with um, the Richmond Chorus since uh, ooh, 1999. So yeah, 20, over 20 years. And, and yeah, right, <laughs> right. And um, I love that. And of course that's, that's gone, we're Zooming. And of course we can't sing on Zoom because it's not synced and just oh. sounding <laughs> like a mess. So I miss that dreadfully, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm not a solitary person, as you know, and I, I'm just trying to get used to living alone when all my usual activities, um, you know, were taken away and, and the choir and singing is about one of the worst things we can be doing right now because it's the droplets spread the infection. And I found that incredibly difficult. So one of the the things that I'm really looking forward to is getting back to singing in church and 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 in um, in in the community. And uh, I'm looking forward to um, just uh, going back to in-person church. Of course, I miss the fellowship terribly, and I miss the corporate worship experience, uh, and I miss. Um, just being a part of the body of Christ. It's just such an uplifting thing to be a part of and all the activities that uh, we can do even you know, during the week and so on, meeting with other people and sharing their experiences in the faith. Um, I miss um, traveling. We had to cancel a trip to overseas to Scotland this year. Um, miss visiting with family and friends in their homes and in my home. And uh, it's just, uh, I think, the church, this is a kind of a learning experience time for the church. I, I think that we're learning to do church in never, ways we never thought possible. You know, in I some ways... We're not, yeah, we're not, able to take, we're not able to take the things for granted anymore. No. It's intentional. You know, if you want to get together with someone, you've got to plan. Yes. Um, you know, it's not just you're going to run into them yeah. um, and then you can chit-chat and, you know, sit around. You've got to make plans. And yeah. the same thing about, you know, anything that we want to do together and to be as a church, it's got to be carefully planned. So I think yeah. there is a, there's a learning curve here for us to, uh, which is maybe not a bad thing. I mean, nobody wants the no. pandemic, but uh, no. I think if there are some things that can be learned from it, maybe that's, mm -hmm. not, uh, you know, it's not all bad. Mary, I want to just kind of bring our time to a bit of a close here. And I just want to thank you for what you do as an elder. I know your, your district is, is grateful to have you. I know that our, our session is uh, strengthened with your particular gifts um, and uh, all that you do around the church. And uh, that, again, as I said, those generations of, of, uh, of people in your family who have mm -hmm. understood the heart of a servant and uh, that, that deep and abiding faith, certainly that has that been transmitted to you and I see it certainly through you to your family and to the people that, that, that you care about. Well, so if it's, it's a real blessing to me. I just, without my faith going through this crisis, I, I, you know, one thing I have found, which is a great positive, is that daily prayer has become so essential to me in this pandemic. And, and it has made me realize that I'm not, not in control and that I need to totally depend on God. And and just, I, I uh, ask him for courage, for strength, for hope, for assurance of his presence every day. And I know he works with me in all the ups and downs. It's not always wonderful, but I know he's always there. And in that way, I think that this current crisis has actually strengthened my faith, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm not thankful for the pandemic, never. I can hardly wait for it to be over. But it's done something to strengthen my faith hugely. Yeah, I think I think more people are coming to that sort of inflection point, right? I mean, yeah. we've lived with this pandemic long enough where people are coming to that point where things are, there's a different way of looking at it. Um, and and that is that is something that I think we can take out of this, uh, yes. of this time. For sure. 
I want to just offer a quick prayer as we close and just want to encourage people to stay and watch the musical meditation that Jenny Burdetti, our music director, has prepared and just want to remind everybody of our worship uh, uh, Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock on our YouTube channel and then there'll be a link to our Facebook page as well. So let's, let's offer a quick prayer. Father, I thank you for our, our time with Mary today as we um, share in conversation about who we are, the things that we believe and um, our, our faith and our commitment um, to you, but more importantly, your love and commitment to us. I thank you for the generations that have impacted Mary's life and for the generations that she will impact and continues to impact. Bless her and surround her with your love and care, with your presence and um, be with all of us as we, as we grow deeper in our faith and maybe grow in different ways in our faith as we navigate these, um, these days of the, of the pandemic. And um, as we come out the other side, uh, make us stronger, more intentional about our relationships and more grateful for what we have. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Victor. A joy to be with you. Thank you very much, Mary. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.